sorry, bear with me. Worked per perfectly when we practiced a minute ago. Can you let me know if you can see that all right? I think it should be all right, yeah? Yeah, got it. Cheers, guys. Uh, so, yeah, hi, everyone. So, I'm Tom Horry. Uh, I work at the Heart Sport and Physical Activity Partnership with Charlie. And I lead on our mental health work, and I have done for the last couple of years. Um, and today, I'm going to talk a bit around our Mental Health Champions program, which hopefully you'll be inspired to sign up to after. But if not, hopefully, it, um, you'll at least be able to take a bit of learning from what I talk about today within your roles, uh, whatever that is within sport and physical activity. Uh, and as Charlie mentioned today, we might not need the full hour, but uh, we've got that hour, so plenty of time for questions. Either put them in the chat as I'm going, or we'll have plenty of time at the end to make sure that we can answer any questions you go through. Um, today's training isn't an accredited course, but say there is an opportunity to get a free license to Minds Course at the end of the course. Uh, at the end of this webinar so uh, there is the opportunity to continue to expand that learning around this area of work but without further ado I'll go on to the main kind of bulk about what we're talking about today so just to give a bit of context about the um, our program and why it's East of England so in 2019 Minds rolled out a program they called the Regional Networks Hubs which essentially was looking to work with organisations at a regional level to land their sport and physical activity offer. Uh, and since that programme was rolled out in 2019, the HSP um, was named as the Regional Network Hub for the East of England. Um, so with over that time, we've been working essentially to achieve mind goals at a regional level. And we've primarily done that working with our AXI partnerships in the other other active partnerships in the East region. So where we're based in Hertfordshire, we have a remit for our county uh, around increasing activity. Um, we've worked with colleagues from the other active partnerships to take a more joined up approach around how we kind of combat um, the mental health agenda within sport and physical activity, how we can look to make opportunities more inclusive to those with mental health conditions. Um, and yeah, essentially looking to land Minds work at a local level. So those were the outcomes that were set out from us at the outset. Bullet pointed there, looking to promote Minds universal offer. So their training and toolkits. So things like the training that we're going to talk about within this course, uh, which you sign up with, if you sign up as a champion, you get access to the training. So looking how we can make sure that things like that are landing at a local level. We're increasing engagement with those things. Uh, also resources. So Minds run a series of webinars themselves. So how can we promote those um, locally and make sure that we're increasing uptake on that? And then also things like building relationships. So as an active partnership, we have a bit of a role around that anyway. We work quite closely with our public health teams, um, but also looking to work with charities. So if it is those local minds, how can we can connect them to sport and physical activity? Can we make sure that their, their service users are getting opportunities to be active? And we'll talk about a bit later why that's so important for those that with mental health conditions. Another kind of thing on the agenda is sharing best, best practice. Um, so things like this, hopefully, uh, talking about um, this programme, sharing it with our partners and opening it up to the whole region is a, another thing that's been on the agenda of the regional network. Um, and they're essentially just looking to land mines work at our regional level. Uh, and as I say, we've been running the hub since 2019 and kind of that's taken on various forms, looking at different engagement events such as this, some kind of wider than that, such as our conference last year. Um, but the hub is due to end 2023, the end of this month. But that's not to mean that we're not going to continue to work on this agenda. Uh, we've agreed in the east of England we're going to continue to meet, to meet and continue to collaborate. But we'll still, if you're half a cheer based, we're still going to have a very much have a big focus on mental health. Uh, and we've even got a new staff member who joined recently who's going to be leading that agenda going forward. So just looking at kind of an introduction to the Champions Programme. So as a regional network, when we was looking at what we wanted to achieve, looking back at the outcomes from the previous slide, we realised that perhaps there was a gap around sport and physical activity. Perhaps those with mental health conditions might not 
be as confident to access physical activities opportunities currently and what could we do to change that then we looked at kind of different programs around that and one of those was the introduction of a mental health champions program essentially what we wanted to do was to design a program that would help promote positive um, conversations about mental health and how people view mental health within the physical activity setting can we get a kind of a pool of individuals who are really passionate about this area of work or at least want to learn more so it's kind of working in two ways upskilling the workforce around this area of work to then hopefully make it more inclusive and those with mental health conditions feel more confident going and accessing sport and physical activity and a big part of this is making sure we can challenge stigma so kind of massive on the agenda of the champions program is challenging that stigma kind of how we can change the way that people perceive mental health kind of I, I think there's a lot has gone on recent years around building conversation about mental health and making sure that it's more built into people's thinking but we want to make sure that we're continuing to embed that in our work and challenge that stigma through the champions program and i put we put like a little um, quote down the bottom so we're not expecting mental health champions to be experts in mental health in fact anyone could be a champion as long as you've got a positive attitude around mental health and are willing to learn and kind of be a champion for that agenda around increasing activities and access to sport and physical activity, then you can be a champion and you're very much not expected to be an expert. If you are an expert, that's great, but there's no expectation around that. So kind of we touched on why it's important, but I think most of us will be have some level of understanding around the research behind both the, the statistics around mental health. So they're kind of stark, um, startlingly, there is one in four adults and one in six young people experience a mental health problem each year. So that's really large numbers of people we're talking about. So that could be different levels of mental health condition, uh, a problem or concern. Um, so even if you're not aware, if you're running sessions or you're involved in sport and physical activity, you're likely to be engaging with those with mental health conditions. So there's, an, there's a, um, a need to be aware regardless, but at the same time, for those that have more severe kind of mental health conditions, uh, being physically active can help um, enable recovery, research has found, and it can also reduce the risk of developing depression. So clearly there's, there's an importance on how we can help people to be physically active so they can gain the benefits of this. Uh, and another kind of fact there around three sessions of group exercise lasting 45 minutes a week is one of the first treatments for mild to moderate depression. Kind of more needs to be done for people to understand just the true benefits of sport and physical activity can have on tackling the, the issues that we have with mental health. Um, on the flip side of that as well, we know that those with mental health conditions currently don't feel comfortable talking about their mental health in a sports setting, kind of as found by the research by mind. So kind of that's why we realised when we were designing this programme, more needed to be done to help people understand, um, to encourage those conversations. A lot of that potentially is that the workforce aren't, uh, have, aren't adequately trained or aren't confident to have those conversations. But hopefully by reducing stigma or kind of upskilling the workforce, we can encourage more people to have those conversations within a sporting setting so it's not going to be um not going to be a barrier to participation and then kind of down the bottom further research that's been con conducted into this area of work around sport and physical activity in the workforce um it's kind of there 55 percent of respondents had experienced mental health problems at some point in their life so that's people that are in our workforce as well so perhaps we need to also think about our workforce and how can we make sure that they're uh, looking after our own mental well-being. So as much as being a mental health champion is about supporting those to access activity and accessing your sessions or your club if you're based at a club, it's also about looking at self, looking after ourselves, of us that are in, involved or working in sport and physical activity. Uh, going on to who can be in a mental health champion. So kind of, as I said in the outset, anyone can really be a mental health champion. For the official programme, 
for the, the program rerun, we do stipulate that you have to be over 18. But that's not to say if you are under 18, you can't start championing mental health uh, more informally in a physical activity setting. But kind of the condition of our program is you do need to be over 18 years of age. Kind of you don't need personal experience of mental health conditions. Um, so it's not when we're talking about champions, we're not talking about lived experience. But at the same time, if you have got lived experience and you are passionate about drawing on that lived experience to support others, then absolutely you're welcome to sign up to the programme and get involved that way. Um, it's, in, it's important that champions have the confidence, skills and knowledge to fulfil their role. Um, but that's not to say that you can't sign up. Um, you can sign up to a champion and we can support you on that process. So when champions sign up, they get access to a free uh, mental health awareness in sport and physical activity, e-learning as a minimum of the role. So hopefully that will at least be the starting point for champions to kind of develop those skills and uh, confidence and knowledge to then be supporting people. Um, but as well, there might be further opportunities for training and development. So kind of we want to support champions with that. And then finally, kind of the ideal champion is just those that have a passion for both sport and physical activity and improving people's mental health. And I'm guessing as you guys have joined the call today, uh, you at least have some interest in this. So potentially this might be an area of work where you want to join, be a champion and do what you can to kind of support this agenda. Um, so kind of moving on to what being a champion involves. Um, so I've got a bit of a list around some of the things that we might expect from a champion. This is just to say that we wouldn't expect champions to do all of this, or it might be a kind of a case of picking some of these or, or whatever's relevant to your role or kind of your, where you work. Um, so actively promoting mental health and well-being. I guess most champions would be doing that. Is can we have positive conversations around this? Can we be that kind of advocate within our club or our setting? to start be thinking what can be done to support those with mental health conditions, or it might even just be um, being a place, being the person people can talk to. If there is people struggling a bit with their mental health, they know that you've got a champion that they can come to and start having those conversations. Again, kind of going on there, working with your club or group, maybe it is if you're not a welfare officer, you could work within your club with the welfare officer, kind of uh, as a team there to support people's mental wellbeing, or, kind of within your group, you could look at what could be done. Is it kind of putting posters up in your location, kind of showcasing that it's okay to talk about about your feelings at this sports club or setting, or just people knowing that you're the champion and then more conversations start having. Might be a case of supporting new people experiencing mental health conditions. Um, so we potentially, you could work with local mental health charities kind of building that um, pathway from them or with social prescribers perhaps. So they know when they've got someone who's got a mental health condition and they look into be physically active, they have a champion in the community that they can sign a place to as a safe space and help start helping those people into an activity. Or it might not be even working with those professionals. It might be a case of you're in a sports club and you know that one of your players has been struggling with their mental health. They're no longer attending. Can you be that person that kind of puts an arm around them, encourages them to get back into physical activity and kind of champions the rest of the team to get behind and support that individual? Kind of as I touched on earlier, be a point of contact for anyone experiencing mental health problems to join the club or group. So kind of when you're making that contact, they know to come to you. But at the same time, maybe if it's an established member of the club or group, they know if they're struggling that they got a champion and kind of being out with that, saying we've got a mental health champion will really help open that conversation up and uh, help people to feel listened to. Uh, kind of wider encouraging and promoting conversations about mental health, kind of as I said about the posters, but it might just be in your capacity, just dropping in um, general conversation, making it more normal for kind of people in the setting that you're in or the environment you work in to start having those communications around how we can support people's mental health and even if it's just talking about our mental health but they're keeping up to date with research resources and support available i know we're all busy so it might not be always 
possible to keep up to date with everything, but it might be something within your role you can do. And I'm going to touch on later, we create a newsletter, kind of circulating a lot of this information. So hopefully by being a champion and signing up to that newsletter, it will help you stay abreast of everything that's going on in this area. And then finally, providing crisis contacts to a club or group. So within a champion, maybe we're going to talk about some of the crisis contacts that you have. Maybe you can share that with a wider group so they know if ever there is someone that's really struggling or at crisis point, uh, they know what route to take and how to get the support they need. And, and just finally say that being a, being a champion is a voluntary role. So it sounds like a lot's being asked of you, but I think when if you're being a champion, you really want to make sure that you're getting something out of it as well as putting it in. So whether that is just kind of the, the feeling that you're making a positive change, uh, we want to make sure we can support you if, we, if you sign up to the programme within this voluntary role to really get something out of the programme. So just in terms of considerations of being a champion, um, so I guess kind of a lot of it goes with that, but I saying, but I think it's important that we have uh, an open and non-judgmental attitude. So kind of if someone's coming to you with a mental health concern, you need to be that safe space for them to talk to. You can't, you can't judge them and kind of, because that's going to have a really negative impact on them um and it might stop them coming forward again um so you need to think about how you're acting within this capacity but i'd imagine kind of um that that kind of goes without saying we want to behave in a professional confidential and non-discriminatory manner so when we talk about that if someone is talking to is coming forward with concerns uh not sharing those when unless it it's really needed to when we talk about crisis we it might be a case that you need to pass that on but generally if it's a lower level concern or someone's just talking about they're feeling a bit emotional at the minute not sharing that kind of outside of that safe space and that's at the same time also around promoting equal opportunities for all particularly within this kind of context uh, those that may be struggling with mental health if it is someone that's got anxiety or depression what can be done to make sure that the session is just as positive for them as it is for everyone else. Being a positive role model, so kind of just practicing what we preach, talking about mental health, kind of opening the door to everyone to continue those conversations, uh, just being really positive within your setting, uh, and just kind of, yeah, essentially being a role model around that. Uh, and perhaps adopting a positive and patient and supportive approach um, so if someone does come to you with a problem at any stage, uh, making sure you listen to what they're saying and being as supportive as possible um, with that. And then finally, this is going to be a bit of a theme of today, but um, looking after yourself and your own well-being. So when you're considering um, being a champion, you need to also think how you can look after your own mental well-being within that role. So moving on to establishing and maintaining boundaries. So within being a champion, it's really important to understand your role and know how to maintain boundaries. So maintaining clear boundaries is about keeping your role clearly defined um, and making it kind of from the outset, letting everyone know what the role of a champion is and what doesn't fit within that remit. It's important that you can like only take responsibility with what you feel comfortable with so it's almost like setting out from the outset, this is your role. I'm a mental health champion. I'm not a mental health kind of professional. So keeping that separate. So in terms of remembering your remit of the champion, if you are trained in mental health first aid, then of course you can use those kind of, use those skills you've learned and the capacity to then sign pace to relevant services. But you're not a counselor or not a mental health nurse. So it's just making sure that you remember your remit of your role. It's more about listening and signposting where, where appropriate uh, and not making professional judgments. Um, so it's being clear within that remit, the role, what the professional skills and knowledges you have to help others, kind of setting that out from the outset, kind of carrying on signposting individuals to further information and support. So 
kind of as I said, you um, when speaking to an individual around a particular concern, it might be a case of asking them what they would like to happen in this situation. It's almost empowering them to take the next step to then you can sign paste them to support which they can follow up on there with their self. So it might be a case they come forward with a particular concern um, by asking that question gets them to think what they actually want to come from this. And then it could be a case of uh, signposting to a GP or some of the um, specialist agencies, which I'm going to talk about later, where they can go to for support. And just being clear about what you can do as well as you can't, what you can't do. There's some details of um, some professional support services later, but it's being clear that you can't necessarily be the panacea of all problems. You need to know when to signpost and pass that information on further. And also uh, in terms of communicating with the boundary, making sure you set the reason for that. So if someone asking you direct, like beyond your role, say so, uh, saying I'm not the best person to advise you on that, um, literally saying I'm not a mental health professional, Although I'm a mental health champion, that doesn't make me um, a professional and have the ability to answer all your questions. So just being really clear with the communication around boundaries. And then kind of finally, don't make promises you aren't being able, you aren't able to keep. So kind of around that confidentiality, if someone says they potentially are going to hurt themselves, then it might be a case that you do have to call the police. So there are times when you can't say um I, I, I'm going to keep that secret for you and then you don't, then the trust will be broken. So there are times when you have to kind of have difficult conversations and um, not give promises you can't keep. And then finally, kind of again, it's important to identify when the boundaries are work, not working. So again, thinking about your own mind, your own well-being. Sometimes you might need to step back. Uh, if you notice that potentially boundaries aren't working and things are getting too much, too much pressure is coming on you within a role as a champion. You might need to step back and um, reflect on that and look after your own well-being. Because if you're not looking after yourself, then you're not going to be in the capacity to uh, advise others or support others with this. So just moving on, just on to some of the signs that someone might be experiencing poor mental health. Um, so as I said, this isn't kind of in-depth training. So this is just... Some of the things that might might look out for, um, and there is additional training available, which will go into more kind of condition specific and things like that. Um, but if you are an activity deliverer, these might be some of the common signs that you see. So firstly, like acting withdrawn in or outside of sessions. So you might notice those that attend your sessions are no longer kind of communicating with peers or um, kind of people say that they're no longer see much of the individual outside the session. I think the big thing around that is around changes in behavior. So if you're noticing the changes in an individual's behavior, then that might be an in big indicator. Um, kind of not coming back to sessions despite having quite engaged well with them in previously, that's probably quite a big indicator that perhaps that person might be struggling or might be having an episode of poor mental health. Uh, and it's within these kind of instances looking out for these signs where it might be a good opportunity in your, your capacity as champion to reach out to that indiv individual and start having that conversation. Lack of interest in the future. So these things may or may not come up in a sport and physical activity setting. Um, disordered thoughts or feelings of confusion. So things like that potentially uh, indicate they might be a kind of a more severe mental illness. But these are things we might need to be aware of and then we can obviously signpost and you're not going to make a diagnosis of at any point but you might have a thought in your head that potentially something doesn't feel right and at this point you would signpost that individual on kind of if if you're having seeing kind of anxiety or panic attacks quite an obvious indicator that something's not quite right then again making sure that you can kind of um, support that person in an appropriate way uh, keep them safe in that instance and signpost appropriately. And then finally, obviously, uh, if someone's talking about uh, suicidal thoughts or talking about self-harming, uh, it's quite a big indicator. It's quite a risk indicator. And that might be something that you would be kind of escalating quite quickly and saying you need to speak to someone about this. Uh, and again, looking at your signposting list and making sure that they reach 
out to those organizations that have the capacity to uh, support them within those examples. And as I put there, it's not an exhaustive list. There may be a wide range of indicators that someone's struggling with poor mental health, um, but this is just a few to touch on today. And yeah, I think kind of as we've been saying throughout, we're not experts as mental health champions. We want to make sure that we refer on to those specialist services. Um, and if, if you become a mental health champion, you receive a booklet. And within that booklet, there's a comprehensive list of services. So kind of the ones you probably would have heard of, but then also condition specific. So hopefully it will be a useful tool for you to then help signpost in those situations where you see someone exhibiting um, some of these behaviours. So kind of that's quite a good um, segue into the crisis contact information. So if someone is exhibiting some of those um, symptoms that we looked at on the other stage, you know, on the other slide, then it might be a, indicate there's a crisis. So I guess when we're talking about a crisis, most importantly, we need to think um, if someone is at serious risk of harm to themselves or others, then that's when we call 99 and ask for the police. Or if someone has attempted suicide, if he has um, got to that stage, then again, it would be 999 and asking for the ambulance. So these are the kind of the really severe crisis situations. Other contacts on there. So you've got NHS 111. Often when we're sign pasting, we would be encouraging people to speak to their GP because that's normally a good point of call because the GP can then direct um, out from there. But NHS 111 might be... If you've got someone with you and they're in the crisis point, you can support them to make that phone call to NHS 111 and then get further support about other services or where next to, to take them. Uh, it might be a case that they say, take that person to A&E, but kind of at least having that as a crisis contact uh, is useful for getting further information. Uh, so Samaritans, I'm sure most of us are aware, um, but they've got their phone number, which offers free support. Um, particularly around people that are experiencing feelings of distress, despair, kind of suicidal thoughts. Um, Samaritans are on there and you can ring that number, you can access their website and they provide support. The Mix and Papyrus, um, they're for under 25. So if you are working with younger people, perhaps you might want to signpost them to them or encourage them to contact those. Uh, Minds um, probably wouldn't be your your first step for crisis contact, but there is online support. So side by side is an online platform. So if someone doesn't want to make a phone call, perhaps that might be a good for one for them. They can go on and um, it's like a text service where they can have a conversation uh, with someone who can then kind of provide support, might give them resources which they can look into all around support in their mental well-being uh, and supporting them that way. And then I guess kind of throughout this, we've talked about the importance of looking after your own support, uh, your own well-being. Um, and there's a various of ways that you can do that. So on mine's website, um, uh, there's there's um, details around looking after yourself. So it's a really good resources on mine's website. Uh, perhaps you could look at peers within your club or organization. So maybe it is a case of within your organization, if it's a large one, perhaps you have two mental health champions, so you're not alone and you can kind of have that um, mutual contact point where you can speak to each other, bounce ideas off, but as much as anything, champion each other's mental health. Um, or even if it's not um, someone else who signed up as a champion, perhaps it's a club welfare officer or perhaps it's just a peer. If you can speak to them just around your own mental well-being, that's really useful as well, because especially if you're taking on uh, being a champion, listening to other people's mental health concerns, uh, there might be times where you need to think about your own mental well-being and have that point of contact to support you with that. In terms of if you actually sign up to the East of England Mental Health Champion Programme, the programme coordinator, which is me, is mental health first aid trained. So happy to have conversations um, with anyone if you are having concerns about your own mental well-being. Um, when you join that programme, um, it's almost like an extra kind of branch strings your bows. There's someone you can um, reach out to at any point if you have particular concerns within your club setting. 
It might be that you reach out to us within that role and we can provide support to you as well. Um, and similarly to that, so each act, local active partnership in the East region, so all my colleagues, um, there's a there's a mental health lead for each active partnership. So as I said, I'm currently the mental health lead at Heartsport and Physical Activity Partnership. If you're based in X6, then at Active Essex, they've got an equivalent. Um, and again, they'll be happy to support with, with this kind of area of work, particularly if there is things popping up in your setting. And then finally is engaging with fellow champions. We're looking over the next year to grow this programme and increase opportunities for champions to engage. So part of the programme is holding quarterly forums, um, giving champions the opportunity to meet with each other. But hopefully this will be developed and um, hopefully we can get a network of champions that can really be a support network within this area of work. Um, so kind of watch this space on this and... That could be a real opportunity if you sign up as a champion to help grow the project and help support your peers. Um, I guess kind of coming towards the end now, um, just in terms of what you get if you actually sign up to the programme. So obviously you guys have registered because you have some sort of interest in kind of championing mental health. And if you want to sign up to the programme formally, uh, this is what you'll receive. So um, we hold a database of your contact details um, and within that, so within the form we send out, we get all your information around whether you were happy to, for us to work with local mental health charities or social providers around signposting. Um, so potentially there, if you within your champion role, there's the opportunity for us to support you to engage with those that might have poor mental health. Um, but also within that database, we make sure that we contact each of our champions at least once a year as well as separate touch points just to kind of see how they're going on with that role to make sure that um, no champion is kind of left on their own once they've signed up to this role um, we can touch base and check in where they are with things and offer any support that's needed kind of more regularly than that we hold uh, or we will be hosting quarterly virtual forums so this is something that we've been floating for a while but my colleague zoe who's now on the call has joined us to lead on mental health uh, going forward and have a bit more capacity around this. Um, so quite excited that we're gonna kind of be reaching out to our champions more and hosting virtual forums. So within those forums is a chance to touch base with your fellow champions and basically um, talk about anything that's been important to you. If there's particular things in your setting that are popping up that might be relevant for other champions to kind of, that forum's a good opportunity to have those conversations um, and, it's almost like a designated time where you can come in. But at the same time, it might be a case that um, champions want, can use that to input into the programme. Kind of, we're still happy to make this, tailor this programme as much around our champions. So within those quarterly forums is an opportunity to help develop the programme to make sure we're, we're providing the right support for those that are actually kind of out there delivering. We also produce a monthly mental health and physical activity newsletter. So by by training as a by joining the champions program, you'll have access to that newsletter, uh, which gets sent out monthly. Which again, we're not talking about kind of the champions' roles having that access to that. Uh, Make sure aware of any up training that's coming up um, within the East of England Mind Network. Kind of we pull all of resources into that newsletter. So there might be an online training that's happening happen in Suffolk which you would never stumble across, but would be really useful for your area of work or it's like a particular focus on mental health. Um, or it might be uh, free mental health funded kind of courses available. So we kind of put all of those in those newsletters, but also the most recent research, uh, any kind of mind resources, um, any upcoming webinars, those kind of things. So kind of making sure that you're kept abreast of everything that's going on within uh, mental health and sport and physical activity. Uh, they're around providing ongoing check-ins, touched in on the yearly check-ins, but again, that could be far more regular. If there's a particular champion that wants to meet more regularly or having particular challenges within their setting or particular thoughts about the programme, kind of, we're here to listen. So it's a really good opportunity by signing up as a champion to help kind of have those check-ins with us and provide that support earlier as much as anything to look after yourself. 
uh, sharing resources, as I mentioned in the newsletter, but we can also send things directly to champions if we think it's kind of not relevant for a newsletter, but might be more relevant for those that kind of gone one step further than sign up to a newsletter and become a champion. Uh, recommending training, um, and in some cases, organizing training. So I mentioned from the outset, everyone who registers as champion gets access to the free online training. But if there's kind of, if we got 10 champions coming to us saying there's a particular gap uh, within their development, that would be really useful. Then perhaps we could look at organizing that training. And if there's funding available, even looking to fund that. Um, and at the same time, recommending training, as I mentioned earlier, any kind of training that's coming down, we'll pass on to you. And if there's a particularly good one, then we'll kind of recommend that as well. And then finally, um, very much listening to our champions. We want to make sure that this program supports you as much as possible and you get as much out of it. So this is how it currently looks. There's scope for it to develop. And as Zoe's come on board recently, she's kind of taken on this program kind of alongside me. So now's a really good time to join and help kind of shape the program going forward. So yeah, I think that's a, a good point to make. And then I guess now... Um, on this slide, this is essentially everything I've touched on, what you'll get as a champion. But now on that QR code, if you've got a phone on you, you can scan that and it will take you to a form around how you sign up. But I know after this session as well, um, Charlie's going to send around an email, which will have kind of the link to go on to book up if you do want to join a champion as a champion formally. Uh, and I know there's, there's quite a few details we look for in that form. So it might be a case you want to do that on your laptop. So happy for you to follow that up after. That kind of concludes everything I wanted to talk about champions today. I will go on to questions in an end, but in a minute, but before I finish, I just wanted to mention an uh, upcoming event that we got. So kind of East of England, mental health in sport and physical activity network. We've got our conference, which is due to run March 27th. Um, so again, as uh, you guys have shown, you have an interest in sport and physical activity and mental health. Uh, the conference is normally, last year we ran it, it was really good, really good engagement event to learn more in this area of work. Uh, and then in this year's conference, we're working quite closely with MINDS, my national team around uh, developing on their MINDS mental health and physical activity toolkit. So that's their toolkit that they designed all around how sport and physical activity can be made more inclusive to those with mental health conditions. And within the conference, we're focusing on three particular area, as are outlined there, kind of involving people with lived experience in the design and delivery of the work, making physical activities inclusive to people experiencing mental health problems and engaging people in physical activities to support their mental health. So what we'll do is we'll have a session explaining kind of what the toolkit says about those. And then it will be followed by case studies but, uh, from around the region where organisations have actually applied elements of that which hopefully brings to life the Minds Toolkit a bit more. Um, kind of a full agenda of this conference is still being finalised in turn, including the keynote speaker. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be a great event, so feel free to sign up. And again, I've got the QR code there, but um, I'm going to ask Charlie to circulate um, it later as well, so, so all that information will be included as well. I think that's everything but happy to take any questions if there are any. Oh. Nice I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Tom. Um, if people want to pop their cameras on and come off mute if they want to ask a question. Happy for you to either put them in the chat, ask them, or if, if there's no questions, that's fine. If you have any thoughts later, um, I'll get Charlie to include my email address so you can always follow up on that. No worries. No? Okay. Must have explained things. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. I think then that probably is about us. So, yeah, as Tom said, um, this has been recorded. And an email with a recording um, will come out probably the early part of next week. Um, but, yeah, well, you're, you're very welcome. Um, and then if you do want to follow up or anything there that particularly... Um, did catch your eye then please do contact tom directly 
and we will do all we can to support you. I'm going to stop the recording there.